Do you ever start to study or work, but then something distracts you or you simply get lost in your thoughts? If so, don't worry. That is perfectly normal, and you can easily change it. All you need is a great system, and that is exactly what this video is about. In the next few minutes, we will see how you can use the Pomodoro technique to build longer periods of focus and get more done in that time. And the best part is, you can try it immediately after watching this video. Ready? Let's get started. For a bit of context, it's good to know that a man named Francesco Cirillo invented the Pomodoro technique while he was a student. To focus on studying, he would set the timer and study until it rang. Since the timer was shaped like a pomodoro, an Italian word for tomato, the technique got its name from it. Over time, he continued developing it until it took on its current shape. Let's see what it looks like and what's important to know. The technique has four steps. One, choose a task. Two, set a timer for 25 minutes and work on your task until the timer rings. Three, take a five minute break, then continue. Four, Take a longer 15 to 30 minute break after every four Pomodoro sessions. Sounds simple, right? It really is. Now let's see how to do it right and get the most out of it. How to choose a task. In our example, Ted will use the Pomodoro technique to write a script for his YouTube video. First, he will do some planning. He will write down everything he needs to do on his to-do list. Next to each task, he will estimate how many pomodoros it might take to complete it. The traditional pomodoro lasts 30 minutes or 25 minutes of work plus five minutes of break. Let's see what his list looks like. Research the topic, two pomodoros, one hour. Write the script, five pomodoros, two and a half hours. Review, half pomodoro, 10 minutes. Correct grammar, half pomodoro, 15 minutes. The tasks that might only take 10 and 15 minutes to complete, Ted will combine and complete in a single Pomodoro. The tasks that might take five Pomodoros to complete, Ted will divide into two tasks. His final list looks like this. Research the topic, two Pomodoros, one hour. Write the intro and content, four Pomodoros, two hours. Write the conclusion, one Pomodoro, half an hour. Review and correct grammar, one Pomodoro, half an hour. Ted then calculates how much time he has today. He has a little bit more than three hours, so he decides to complete the first two tasks on his list. Important to remember, write down all the tasks you need to do. Estimate how many Pomodoros each task might take. Combine shorter tasks to create a single Pomodoro. Break longer tasks, five Pomodoros or more, into multiple tasks. Estimate how much time you have. Based on this, Choose tasks to do. How to prepare and avoid distractions. The next important thing is to get everything ready and make sure that nothing is going to distract you during the Pomodoro session. The reason is simple. Once you set the timer, your main focus should be on the task at hand until the timer goes off. That way, you get the most of your time. Or, as Francesco Cirillo says in his book, The Pomodoro Technique. A Pomodoro can't be interrupted. It marks 25 minutes of pure work. A Pomodoro can't be split up. There is no such thing as half of a Pomodoro or a quarter of a Pomodoro. The atomic unit of time is a Pomodoro. To do this, Ted will prepare everything before starting his Pomodoro session. He will turn on his laptop and place a glass of water, paper, and pen next to it. That way, during the Pomodoro session, he doesn't need to get up and look around because everything he needs is right there. He can concentrate fully on his task. He will also make sure that nothing distracts him during the Pomodoro session. That is why he will go to the bathroom before setting an alarm. He will put his phone on airplane mode to stop the notifications and put a sign on his door that says he is busy. Then Ted will set his alarm to ring in 25 minutes and start his first Pomodoro session. If someone interrupts him anyway, Ted will reply that he will reach that person a little later. If the person persists, Ted will consider the Pomodoro interrupted and start a new one. Whenever something comes to his mind that has nothing to do with his task, Ted will write it down on a piece of paper to do it later. These can be random thoughts like calling Penny, doing the laundry, and so on. 
This way, he will ensure that all external and internal distractions are dealt with. He will stay focused on the task at hand and put everything else on hold for later. Important to remember, place everything you need on the desk, turn off all notifications, turn on the alarm and begin the Pomodoro session. If someone interrupts your session, reply that you will reach that person a little later. Write down random thoughts on a piece of paper so you can deal with them later. As we can see, by focusing fully on one task for the next 25 minutes, Ted will be able to accomplish more in less time. If Ted finishes his task before the timer rings, he will use that time to review what he has done, make small improvements, or correct something. When the timer rings, it's time for a break. Each time the timer rings, Ted will draw a little Pomodoro next to the task. Later, he can see how many Pomodoros he did to complete each task. This type of tracking can be very beneficial. Not only is it very motivating to see how many Pomodoros you've done, but it can also be a great way to improve the process. For example, let's say it took Ted three Pomodoros to research the topic. He previously estimated that it would take two. Now, Ted can think about how he can improve his way of researching to speed it up and do it in two Pomodoros next time. For example, he could bookmark Wikipedia or Audible to make the research faster. It's also important that we make the most of our breaks. We will see how to do this in the next few minutes of the video. How to take breaks properly. Let's see what Francesco Cirillo says about breaks in his book. The three to five minute break gives you the time you need to disconnect from your work. This allows the mind to assimilate what's been learned in the last 25 minutes and also provides you with the chance to do something good for your health, which will help you to do your best during the next Pomodoro. As soon as the alarm goes off, the break begins. Ted immediately leaves whatever he was working on. He doesn't try to work another minute just to finish something. Instead, he drops his work and immediately switches to break mode. During the break, Ted will try to fully disconnect. He will not think about what he was working on or talk about it. As he has been on the laptop for the past 25 minutes, he will try to do something different, make coffee, listen to a song, or eat some fruit. He will try to use his break as best he can to recharge his batteries before the next Pomodoro session starts. Then Ted will do this process three more times. After he has done all his four Pomodoro sessions, Ted will take a longer 15 minute break. He will cook lunch, go for a walk, or call Penny. He will do his best to clear up his mind so he can be fresh for the next task. Important to remember, stop working and take a break as soon as the alarm goes off. Try to disconnect completely. Don't think or talk about your work. Do something good for yourself to recharge. For example, drink or eat something healthy. If you like the video so far, please like and subscribe. That would mean a lot to us, thank you. So what happens when you are using the Pomodoro technique? First, you become more productive, as the working time creates a space in which you do things. You also avoid burnout and stress, as the break time creates a space where you can relax without feeling guilty. Next to it, over time, your focus sharpens and your concentration lasts longer. But also the feeling of time passing changes. It becomes a positive thing. Time is passing, and you are actually using it actively. It doesn't matter what hasn't been done, only what you are doing. Or, as Francesco Cirillo says in his book, with the Pomodoro technique, figuring out how much time is wasted isn't important. How many Pomodoros we've accomplished is. Pomodoro after Pomodoro, you achieve your goals. At the end, here's our extra tip. Always look for ways to improve your process just like Ted did. Schedule one Pomodoro at the end of the day to ask yourself questions like, what can I improve? Was there anything that took a long time to complete? How can I do it faster next time with the same quality? In this way, the Pomodoro technique becomes a great starting point for further improvements. Now that you have everything you need, do you want to try it out? To help, we have created videos of different Pomodoro sessions for you. Why not give it a try? Tell us how it went in the comments below. We would love to hear about your experience. Good luck and thanks for watching.